Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we will find the area between two curves. In general, if you want to find the area between two curves, y equals f of x and y equals g of x, y equals f of x, y equals g of x, over an interval from a to b, want to find the area of the region enclosed between the curves, the formula is the area equals the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx, where f of x is the top curve and g of x is the bottom curve. So I would like to present a specific example of this. So let's find, find the area of the region between a line and a parabola. Let's find the area of the region between y equals x plus 1 and y equals 1 half x squared minus 3. y equals x plus 1 is a straight line, and y equals 1 half x squared minus 3 is a parabola. Uh, the straight line is a line with slope 1. The slope is 1, so it's rising as it goes from left to right. And the parabola is an upward opening parabola because the coefficient of x squared is positive. One half is positive. So the parabola opens up. So it makes sense that there should be a region between the line and the parabola. If we were to draw them together, there's the parabola, there's the line, the region between them would be there. So we want to find the area of this region. <clears throat> the difference between this region and what I've drawn here is that here the boundaries A, x equals A, and x equals B uh, were sort of arbitrary. Uh, they were just vertical boundaries imposed in the region. Whereas here, the left and right boundaries are naturally occurring, they are the intersection points of uh, the two curves. So we would like to know the x-coordinate at each of uh, these boundary points. And then we will be able to calculate the area. It will be the integral from the smaller x value here to the larger x value there of the top curve, which is the line, the line is on top, so x plus 1, minus the bottom curve, which is the parabola, 1 half x squared minus 3. <clears throat> so it's going to look like, the area is going to look like an integral from a to b of the top curve, which is x plus 1, minus the bottom curve, which is 1 half x squared minus 3 dx. So we need to find A and B. To do that, we need to figure out where these two curves intersect. Algebraically, then we solve x plus 1 equals 1 half x squared minus 3. Uh, to do this, we'll write it as, an, uh, as a quadratic equation in standard form. Let's begin by multiplying both sides by 2. So 2x plus 2 is equal to x squared minus 6. Just clear the equation of fractions. Then we'll move all the terms, say, to the right side to get a positive coefficient of x squared. So x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. So here's our quadratic equation in standard form. 
we could solve this equation either using the quadratic formula as a last resort or hopefully by factoring this quadratic. Notice that x squared minus 2x minus 8 does factor into x minus 4 times x plus 2. And since the right hand side is 0, we can use the zero product principle. Either x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. And these equations are very easy to solve. x is equal to 4 or x is equal to negative 2. So those are the two x values where the curves cross. This left x value is x equals negative 2. And this right x value is x equals 4. The vertical orientation uh, of the region is not important in terms of finding its area. But you could figure out the y coordinates of these two points uh, by plugging the corresponding x's into either one of these equations. This one would probably be simpler. So if x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So this point is actually the point negative 2 comma negative 1 in the third quadrant. And this point, if x is 4, y is 5, that's the point 4 comma 5 in the first quadrant. So continuing with our area then, our a and b are negative 2 and 4, and then maybe we can simplify this, we can subtract, this is going to become x plus 1 minus 1 half x squared plus 3, and then combining the 1 and the 3 to get 4, we have integral negative 2 to 4 of x minus 1 half x squared plus 4 dx. And now we will integrate term by term. So the antiderivative x squared over 2 plus the integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. And there's already a 1 half there, so it's going to become x cubed over 6. And then the integral of 4 dx is 4x. And then we have to plug in negative 2 and 4. So first we plug in 4, then we plug in negative 2, and we subtract. Plug in 4, let's see here, 4 squared is 16 divided by 2 is 8. Plus 4 cubed is 64 divided by 6, let's just write that down. And then 4 times 4 is 16. So that's what we get when we plug in 4. Plug in negative 2. Negative 2, uh, I see an error here. That should have been a minus copy here. Uh, minus x cubed over 6, not plus x cubed over 6. Let's fix that. That's minus, that's minus 64 over 6. Plugging in x equals negative 2, we get 4 over 2, which is 2 minus negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So we have here negative 8 over 6. And then plus 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. <clears throat> so now we just have to do a little bit of arithmetic to get the final answer. This is equal to 8 plus 16 is uh, 24 minus, let's write this in terms of uh, thirds, canceling, 32 thirds. And then minus, we have here 2 minus 8, which is negative 6, and then double negative there makes plus, and again in terms of thirds, we can cancel 4 thirds. So this is uh, 24 minus 32 thirds. Distribute this negative sign, it's plus 6, and then minus 4 thirds. So what do we have there? 30, and then minus 36 thirds. So the arithmetic works out pretty cleanly here. 36 thirds is 12. So 30 minus 12, final answer is 18. So the area of the region here between 
the line and the parabola works out to 18. We had to figure out where the two curves crossed because that gave us the A and the B in our formula for calculating the area. And that turned out to be negative 2 and 4. And then we had to recognize the top curve and the bottom curve. So the top curve was the line, the bottom curve uh, was the parabola. Do a little bit of algebra simplifying uh, that difference. Here it is, the difference is expressed now in terms of a polynomial. Integrate the polynomial term by term, uh, and then plug in the numbers. We do some arithmetic, and out pops what should always be a positive answer, uh, because we're trying to find the area of a region. So the area of a region should be expressed uh, using a positive number. Okay, uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it instructive.